here at the IES in Vienna. We're here with Franco Lori, who is with Immunostatics, or Virostatics, excuse me. And, and also a new company which you're now forming, a collaboration, a, a new merger. And I'm going to let you start out with explaining that, that new company. Right, sure. I'm the CEO of Virostatics, and Virostatics is a spin off of the Research Institute for Genetic and Human Therapy. Uh, has been a U.S.-based uh, non-for-profit organization, standing since 20 years almost. Mm -hmm. um, and, and another spin-off of, uh, of Wright uh, is genetic immunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so virostatics and genetic immunity, um, after separating 15 years ago, are going to reunite uh, uh, because each of the two components brings uh, something very interesting uh, that is essential, in our opinion, not only fight the virus, but also help the immune system in the fight against HIV AIDS. So you've been working in the immune field with immune sense uh, type drugs or compounds, I should say, for years. And, and I think right now you're working in vaccines as well. That's correct. So what, can you tell us about what you're bringing to this conference? Sure. Um, I would say that the, the, the background element is very important to understand what we are doing. We have been learning in the last uh, four or five years that uh, uh, the virus is not the only component uh, that brings to HIV AIDS. Uh, the other component is the immune system. I mean, we always knew that, uh, but what we are coming appreciating now is that the immune system is not just the victim of the virus. The immune system can do a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, right now, what happens is that uh, years and years of exposure uh, to the virus uh, exhausts the immune system. Mm -hmm. The immune system is too much activated. That This hyperactivation leads to pathogenesis and AIDS. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is not only to inhibit HIV, but we need to limit the hyperactivation of the immune system. In other words, we need to protect the immune system. And the, once the immune system is protected, uh, we can then boost the immune system. So it's a three-pronged attack. Mm -hmm. Inhibit the virus, limit hyperactivation, thereby protect the immune system, mm -hmm. and boost the immune system. Mm -hmm. So the reason for uniting uh, uh, virostatics and genetic immunity is because each of the two companies brings uh, two of the three components. Mm -hmm. So virostatics uh, is working on uh, inhibiting the virus and protecting the immune system against hyperactivation. And genetic community is working on inhibiting the virus and boosting the immune system so that we finally have this three-pronged attack. Mm -hmm. Now, we are presenting here at the conference uh, phase two data on uh, both uh, small molecules and therapeutic vaccines. And they are both very interesting. The therapeutic vaccine is the one I'd like to focus my attention because uh, 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 the phase 2A data have been completed. Uh, 36 uh, in individuals have been uh, analyzed in a placebo controlled trial. Mm -hmm. And we can see a few important uh, things. Uh, uh, number one, uh, it is safe. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of intrinsic to vaccines to be safe. Mm -hmm. Number two, it's a therapeutic vaccine. So it works like a vaccine. It boosts the immune system as a vaccine, but it is administered after infection. Mm -hmm. So individuals that were antiretroviral therapy naive have been exposed to the vaccine in the course of a 24 weeks. And what we have seen is a gradual and constant decrease of viral load during the 24 weeks. And it's interesting because it's not like we were used to see with the antiretrovirals. You know, start getting the drug, the viral load drops, drops immediately. Right. Yeah. Exactly, and unfortunately, most of the time rebounds unless you create a cocktail of many of these drugs. The immune system works in a different way. It's slow, yeah. but constant, and that's the beauty of it. So we are really quite excited about that part. 70% of the virus is inhibited in the peripheral blood, and that's uh, uh, encouraging. CD4 stay um, uh, in the constant level, and uh, in the immune system is boosted. So if we measure the, uh, the, uh, some correlates 
of, uh, of, of immune control, uh, then we can see that they are boosted significantly mm -hmm. by uh, the vaccine, and the, the boosting is coincident with the, the suppression of the virus. Mm. So, at the same time. At the same time. Uh, now, the other th interesting thing is that uh, uh, individuals are immunized every three weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's not a daily this approach. Is a, is this every six weeks, I'm sorry. <laughs> every six weeks, but it's on in, in, infinitely. In our, our uh, we, we, we think, we, think that we need to keep boosting. Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't, uh, we don't uh, mm -hmm. think it's going to be one or two applications. So in that mm -hmm. respect, therapeutic vaccines are different from preventive vaccines, right, okay? Right. So preventive vaccine, you immunize one, two, maximum three times, and then you are somehow protected or you are not. Uh, for therapeutic vaccines, it's going to be every six weeks, mm -hmm. maybe longer. Maybe we hope every three months, uh, ideally. Yeah. So that would be the kind of the profile of a, of a vaccine versus, uh, first of all, it's, it's working immun immunologically. And then secondly, it is, it is a, uh, something that does not have to be given daily. That's correct. And, and you're looking at something that might work uh, infinitely, but nevertheless be treated, be having to be administered, et cetera. Is this something that uh, is going to be on uh, given, can it be given individually, or would you have to use in combination with a, do you think you'd have to use in combination with a drug? That's a very interesting question. In fact, uh, um, we think we can do both. And in fact, the data we're presenting at this conference support the use of the vaccine alone, mm -hmm. without other drugs. That would be ideal. That yeah. would be one approach, obviously. Mm -hmm. So one can start thinking about uh, being immunized every six weeks, as I mm -hmm. said before, maybe every three months, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, delay mm -hmm. starting other antiretrovirals. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that would be obviously the ideal situation. Mm -hmm. We do not exclude the possibility of using the vaccine in combination with other antiretrovirals, but in both cases, uh, we think it has to be used as early as possible after the infection. Mm -hmm. We're not excluding other uses, yeah. but of course the immune system has to be um, still uh, responsive to the, to the vaccination. So mm -hmm. theoretically, you'll find that uh, to be the case in individuals that have been recently okay. exposed to that the- That was going to be my question, yeah. Yes. Is there any difference between, uh, there obviously is a difference between those who, uh, you know, maybe as soon as they become infected, maybe this is the best thing to do right away. As soon as they, if they, you know, they know they've been infected, there, there's no chance of, you know, it's not, it's, it's too late to catch it any other way. But at that point, maybe you could, uh, you could maybe uh, eliminate that viral set point that would take place I mean, if it's really close. That's that right. Uh, I think that's a very interesting observation. Um, all what people have tried to be a achieving with prophylactic vaccines so mm -hmm. far mm -hmm. has been to lower the set point. Mm -hmm. um, nobody in the, commu in, in the scientific community ever thought uh, that a prophylactic vaccine could really uh, sterilize against infection. So mm -hmm. the best hope even for a prophylactic vaccine is to decrease the set point. Now, if that's the, the best hope, why not doing it through a therapeutic vaccine? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do it to, to the whole community before infection without knowing whether you'll be infected or not. Mm -hmm. Let's think about doing it after infection mm -hmm. so that uh, you achieve the same goal, lowering uh, the set point. And if one can lower the set point, the expectation is that uh, life uh, will be much longer. Mm -hmm. So life expectation will be longer. Um, and the time uh, drug-free expectation will also be longer. Mm -hmm. And so if one imagines now a situation where is, uh, a person is diagnosed, uh, and instead of waiting until the CD4 drop below 350, 500, whatever that is the threshold, mm -hmm. one can have access to a vaccination and uh, being treated every three months as opposed mm -hmm. to daily. Yeah. And, uh, you know, delay the, the, the initiation of drug, the triple drug therapy as much as possible, uh, that I think is, is going to be the, the mm -hmm. vision that we have uh, uh, to treat uh, individuals in the, in, the, in the new millennium. And this is not something that we would 
I, I certainly don't want to ask you the price tag on this. There's no way to do that. But is, do you think it could be made at least affordable within the, let's say, say within the parameters of what we're now spending on treatment? Um, the vaccine itself, uh, uh, basic cost is not, uh, is not outrageous. So costs mm -hmm. can be contained. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not up to the scientists, unfortunately, to decide the costs yeah. uh, oh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a vaccine. So uh, I, I can't tell you at the end of the yeah. story uh, right. that definitely is going to be out of, of, of our control. But there control. doesn't seem to be a sense that there's this outrageous production that is that's, entailed. Is, that's is it, correct. Is it a capsule or a... a, a how, or do you know how it'll be administered? It, it's, it's, it's a, a topical delivery. Oh. So that's also new. Yeah. And that's something I, I'd like to, 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 to describe a, shot, a little bit. Just a sub, okay. Actually, uh, we essentially um, scratch a little bit the, the upper part of the oh. skin mm -hmm. without creating any injury mm -hmm. and remove the stratum corneum. Mm -hmm. Okay, here is the... Essentially, take a sponge like this. Mm -hmm. Remove the stratum corneum. Yeah. The stratum corneum is really the part of the skin we can all see. Right. from outside mm -hmm. and it separates uh, the inside of the body from the outside world mm -hmm. where there are viruses pathogens uh, any sort of thing so once this has been exfoliated mm -hmm. um, then one can uh, remove with uh, with some tape uh, the dead layer of skin mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. has just been like exfoliated pull it off. Yeah. just pull it off mm -hmm. and then apply this is uh, essentially a the patch, the patch yeah. all right mm -hmm. you, one applies it to the skin mm -hmm. okay then there is this triangle that keeps open right, right. and then one puts uh, without needle mm -hmm. through a syringe or a mini bottle the content inside it in, stays in, area, in, in this area. in this area yeah. in the area in, in this right, area over right. here mm -hmm. and uh, that stays on the skin for three hours and it just gets absorbed. Right it gets the skin. absorbed mm -hmm. to the skin and gets then disposed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, below the skin, we have a net of so called Langerhans right. cells. Mm -hmm. They are antigen presenting cells, uh, professional antigen presenting cells. Their job is to monitor anything happens, mm -hmm. anything tries to go through the skin, pick up the pathogen, and immediately carry it to the, to the lymph node. So once we apply. Well, that's what you want to happen. That's exactly it. So we, 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 have, we have our target uh, yeah. much closer than we thought before. Yeah. So instead of going through an injection, uh, through a, 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 a sh shot of, 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 uh, of, of DNA through the skin, yeah. uh, through electroporation, not, nothing like that. Our best allies re are just below our skin. That's so this what is anywhere saying. like on your arm or where... You don't have to shave your skin, just get it scraped a little bit, right? Uh, shaving is also important, yes. It is, or it is? Okay. Yes, so but it, 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 is not, it, it is not given uh, yeah, no, uh, on, the, on, on the side. Usually we do it uh, on the back upper part of the shoulder, of the, of the back, uh, yeah. or inside the tights yeah, to access you. the axillary and the li uh, yeah. inguinal lymph nodes. So but one patch per, is it one patch? Right now we are doing four patches. Oh, you're doing four patches, okay. Two in the tights and two in, in the back. So it takes a, a visit at a, a, a clinic a few hours. Um, it, After it, four hours. Well, right now, yes, because we are in the uh, context of a clinical trial, mm -hmm. so we want to monitor the, uh, uh, the individuals as best as possible. But in the future, as a matter of fact, we don't need to do that. Uh, the, the, the whole application is 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. The doctor can do that uh, every three months, uh, mm -hmm. and then the the, uh, the patient can go home and then dispose it three hours later. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been very delightful to have you back again, and, and I can't tell you how important it is for us to visit with you on occasion because you're not only about looking at immune system, you know, any research that's going on in the immune system area, but the fact that you're actually bringing something forward here that's really could be very important. Yeah. Thank you very much. We're very excited and thanks for having us. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah.